Hello, welcome to our film series on how to use 3D printing to bring STEM into the classroom. In these videos, you'll see how educators can use 3D printing exercises to introduce students to STEM careers and technologies. For this exercise, we'll be using the Flash Forge Adventurer 3 printer. The Adventurer 3 is a very nice, affordable 3D printer with a good collection of features for its price. For the STEM exercise, we'll be using one of our Learning Blade 3D Maker Quest lessons. In this lesson, students will print a simple robotic claw that demonstrates some of the specialized tools robots use. For this exercise, you'll need a 3D printer and its compatible filament, a pair of pliers to make assembly easier, and some small items that will be picked up by the robot claw. So, let's get started! First, you'll need to unpack and set up your 3D printer. Setting up most 3D printers is a straightforward process. Just follow the startup instructions that come with your printer. If you'd like more information, you can find detailed demonstrations of how to set up and load the FlashForge Adventurer 3 printer at the end of this video. To download the 3D lesson files, we'll go online and visit Thingiverse.com. Thingiverse is a website that hosts a massive collection of 3D models and related exercises. To find today's lesson, go to Thingiverse.com and search for Learning Blade Robot in the main search bar. This will show you a page with today's lesson on making a custom design prototype. In Thingiverse, you can choose to download all of the lesson files or individual model files within a collection. For our lesson, we'll click the Download All Files button and select a location on our hard drive to save them. Thingiverse packages everything in a zip file, so once it's downloaded, you'll need to right-click on the zip file and extract all of the files. Now you have all the 3D files needed for this exercise. Once your 3D printer is set up and you have the 3D object files, you can begin 3D printing. Most 3D printers can be controlled by different software applications. For this lesson, we'll demonstrate the flash print software that's designed for the Adventurer 3 printer. If you would like to watch a demonstration of downloading and installing flash print, skip to the detail sections at the end of this video. To print the 3D objects, launch flash print and click the load button at the top of the screen. Select the 3D model files from where they're saved on your hard drive. FlashPrint will scan the file and may detect issues with the model's surface. If so, FlashPrint will ask if you'd like to repair the file. Click the Repair Model button to continue. FlashPrint may also ask if you'd like the objects centered on the print platform. Click Yes to continue. When you can see your model file inside the printer's print area, you're ready to continue. 3D objects with large overhanging sections will need supports to help each layer of the object print properly. The objects shown do not require supports, but other objects you print might. To add supports, you would click the Supports button at the top of the screen. Then in the Support window, you can have FlashPrint automatically generate supports where they're needed. Our object is ready to print, so we'll click the Print button at the top of the screen. Make sure to change the material type to match the filament type for your machine. This model does not require supports, so we'll make sure supports are disabled. A raft is a base layer of plastic that's printed onto the platform below the 3D object. The raft helps the object stay in place on the print platform as the filament cools. The objects in this activity are very wide and not very tall, so we won't use a raft. We'll make sure the raft option is disabled. FlashPrint allows you to print objects by using either custom or predetermined settings. For this object, we're going to use the standard setting. Once you've chosen the 3D printer settings, click OK. FlashPrint will ask you to save the project file, and then it will show you a preview of the printed object. You can move the preview layer slider bar up and down to see any layer of the print job. Once you're satisfied that the print job looks like what you want, click the Send G Code button. This will send the printing commands, a type of instructions called G-code, to the printer. Once the printer has all of the commands, it will begin printing. FlashPrint estimates the amount of time a print job will take and displays that estimate in the upper right corner. Different settings will produce different print times, so with experience, you should get a good feel for how long printing objects will take at different settings. Here, you can see a time-lapse example of how the 3D printing process works. 
The printer will print the objects layer by layer until the print job is done. Once it finishes, the printer will slide the print bed to the front of the machine and begin cooling down. It's a good idea to wait a few minutes after printing to make sure the print bed isn't too hot. You remove the print bed plate by squeezing the release tab at the front of the bed and sliding out the plate. The 3D object will be attached to the raft, but both the raft and the objects can be removed by flexing the print bed plate. You may need to remove smaller pieces from the raft with pliers or a flat spreader. The lesson files on Thingiverse also include a PDF of instructions on using this 3D printed model with your students. The goal of this activity is to help students understand how most robots are built to perform specific purposes. The robot claw you will assemble is a simple version of a two-fingered hand designed to pick up small, lightweight objects. Once you have removed the printed objects from the print bed, you can begin assembling the claw. The model is designed in layers that sandwich together and are then pinned in place with many small pins. You may find it helpful to insert the pins into the bottom layer parts first. Then, when you place the top layer parts over them, the pins will help you line up the parts. It's usually best to push the pins through the slots in the layers instead of pulling them. Pulling the pins may break them. If you break any pins, you can always print extra pins with the included 3D model file in the activity. Place the geared pieces into the grooved middle section of the claw's bottom layer. Make sure that sliding the middle bar up and down will rotate the two geared lever arms. Place the claw's top layer over the bottom layer and begin pushing the pins through both layers. The pins will help hold everything in place while you continue working. Now, slip the two non-geared arms between the two layers at the upper section of the robot claw. Once you have them in place, push the pin up from the bottom layer into the top layer. Now close the two layers of each claw arms around the lever arms. Once the robot claw is assembled, you should be able to slide the middle bar up and down to open and close the claw. After the claw has been assembled, have the students try to pick up several different types of objects with the robot claw. Some will be easy, while others won't. Educators can also expand this lesson and give students experience designing three-dimensional shapes as well. The 3D model files in this lesson can be uploaded into your favorite CAD software so students can remodel the ends of the robot claw. A free, easy-to-use CAD application that we'd recommend is Tinkercad. Tinkercad.com is a free website that allows you to work with 3D shapes and create complex objects. If you'd like to see Tinkercad in action, skip to the additional section at the end of this video for more detail. To use Tinkercad, you'll first create an account. Once you've created an account, you can get started by clicking the Create New Designs button. Next, we'll import one of the blank arms from the product files we downloaded from Thingiverse.com. Click the Import button in the upper right menu in Tinkercad. Tinkercad will ask you to choose the file to import, so select either the blank left or right arm and click Open. After you select the file, Tinkercad will allow you to modify the scale or dimensions of the file when it's imported. We're going to leave the size alone, so simply click Import and Tinkercad will add the imported file to your work plane. Tinkercad makes it easy to modify objects by adding new shapes and then grouping them together. We start by dragging a wedge shape onto the work plane. The shape needs to be rotated to fit against the blank arm. We'll also resize the wedge a little as well. We'll move the wedge into place against the blank arm. It's okay if the two shapes overlap. Now we can hold down the shift key and left click both the wedge shape and the blank arm. Then we'll choose the group button from the top menu. Now the new arm is a single object. We'll need two matching arms, so we'll press the control key and the C key to copy the arm. And we'll click the control key and the V key to paste a new version of it. We'll move the new arm out of the way. Now, with the new arm selected, we'll click the Reflect button in the top menu and click the black direction arrow that shows the direction we want to mirror the arm. Now we have two matching arms. To download the new arms, select them both and click the Export button in the main menu. This will pull up the export window with some exporting options. 
Most 3D printers will work with either OBJ or STL files. For this lesson, we prefer STL files, so click that button and select the location on your hard drive to save the files. The new robotic arm can now be imported into the FlashPrint software and 3D printed. And that's how this activity works. Now you know how easy it is to use the FlashForge's 3D printers to introduce students to STEM careers and technologies. For more examples of how educators can use 3D printing as a STEM teaching tool, check out some of our other lesson videos in this series. If you'd like to learn more about FlashForge's 3D printers, visit our website at flashforge-usa.com. For more information about Learning Blade and our STEM and computer science lessons, visit learningblade.com or email us at info at learningblade.com. Now, if you'd like to see how to set up your 3D printer, install FlashPrint, or work with 3D objects in Tinkercad, keep watching these informative step-by-step -step videos. Your 3D printer should have included a set of easy-to-follow setup instructions. After unpacking and removing the shipping materials from the printer, plug the included power supply cable into a wall outlet and power on the printer. Once the printer has powered on, select Filament, then Load on the touchscreen menu. The printer will begin heating up the print nozzle. Once the nozzle has heated up, the touchscreen will ask you to load the filament. Remove the filament door on the side of the printer. Make sure your filament has a smooth cut end that will easily fit into the intake opening. Take the spool of filament and insert the end of the filament into the intake opening marked by the yellow and black arrow. Once the filament has been inserted about an inch, the printer will automatically start reeling in the filament. Place the filament spool on the spindle, making sure the spool can unroll smoothly. Close the printer door. After about 30 seconds, the plastic filament will start pushing out of the printer nozzle. Once this occurs, press OK on the printer touchscreen menu. The printer filament is now loaded. Once your 3D printer is set up and loaded with filament, we advise you to connect the printer to your Wi-Fi network. This will make printing from the FlashPrint software much quicker and easier. You can connect the printer through the touchscreen menu on the front of the printer. Press Tools, then Network, then Wi-Fi. The printer will then scan for available Wi-Fi networks. Use the left and right arrow buttons to find your Wi-Fi network, then press the name of the network you want to use. This will take you to a screen where you can enter your Wi-Fi password. Once you've entered your password, press the check button at the top right of the screen and the printer will connect to the network. Once the printer is connected, a check mark will show to the right of the network name on the screen. You can now press the return arrow button at the bottom of the screen until you return to the main menu. The printer is now connected and ready to print. The printer comes with a copy of FlashPrint, but it's always best to go to the FlashForge website and download the latest version. Just go to flashforge.com and roll over the support option in the main menu. Select Download Center from the drop-down options. This will take you to the latest versions of the FlashForge software. Find the latest version of the FlashPrint software for your operating system and click the download button for that version. You'll need to select a location to download the software zip file and once the software has downloaded, right-click on the zip file and extract all of the files. Double-click on the FlashPrint application to launch the FlashPrint setup. Once FlashPrint has finished installing, select the Launch FlashPrint checkbox and click OK. When FlashPrint opens for the first time, it will ask you to select your printer. Choose Adventurer 3 from the menu and click OK. FlashPrint will open up, showing the blank 3D printing plane within the printer's print area. Before you can print, you'll need to connect FlashPrint to your 3D printer. If you've already connected your printer to your Wi-Fi network, you'll choose Print and Connect Machine from the main menu. This shows a pop-up window with the printer's IP address. To find out your printer's current IP address, go to the printer and select Tools, then About from the printer's touchscreen menu. In the About section, press the right arrow button two times to see the printer's current IP address for the Wi-Fi network. 
This is the number you'll need to enter into Flashprint's Connect Machine pop-up window. Once you've entered the correct IP address, click the Connect button. After Flashprint has connected to the 3D printer, the printer's status box will appear in the lower right corner of the software. Click Done to close the pop-up window. Now you are ready to print to your 3D printer. To use Tinkercad, you'll first create an account. Once you've created an account, you can get started by clicking the Create New Designs button. This takes you to a blank 3D workplane where you can drag and drop new 3D objects to make your creations. We recommend also dragging a ruler onto the workplane as well. The ruler will help you manipulate objects with better precision. The key to Tinkercad is how easily it allows you to add, modify, and group new shapes together to create complex objects. To get started, drag a new object from the right menu onto the 3D work plane. When you select an object by left-clicking, Tinkercad shows you the object's main parameters. And if you have a ruler on your work plane, it also shows you the measurements of each of the shape's dimensions. You can modify an object by either dragging one of the control points on a selected object, or by left-clicking on the measurement of that parameter and entering a new number. Tinkercad also has tools for grouping together multiple shapes into a new object. Press the Shift key and left-click the shapes you want to combine, and then click the Group button at the top right of the work plane. You can ungroup shapes by selecting the object and clicking the Ungroup button. A very powerful feature of Tinkercad is the ability to turn any shape or object into a whole, or negative version of the shape. This means that instead of adding to a shape, a whole, or negative object will subtract from a shape once it's included in a group. You can see this in action by selecting a shape and clicking the Whole option in the upper right menu. Now, if you group this whole shape with another shape, the whole shape will be subtracted from the other shape creating a complex new object. This is how all of our 3D Maker Quest objects were created. And Tinkercad has many other exciting features students may wish to explore. You can import 3D models like STL files to use in your creations. You can change the color of objects. You can mirror an object in a specific direction. You can align objects to an edge or to the center of all the selected objects, and you can also rotate an object in any direction. By experimenting and playing around with Tinkercad, your students can explore the exciting world of creating 3D objects. <laughs>